miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Good evening, everybody. Mark Klein hanging out with you. Welcome to another Long Island Blues Warehouse. Tonight, we are talking to a world-class musician that has recorded and or performed with Billy Joel, Elton John, Billy Preston, Greg Allman, Bon Jovi, Celine Dion, The Beach Boys, just to name a few. On the stage with us right now, Born in Brooklyn, raised right here on Long Island. Please welcome Richie Canada. Let's make some music, Benny. Come on.
Oh, yeah. This week's featured artist, Richie Canada and the Monday Night Jam Band. Richie! Yo. Welcome to the Blues Warehouse, my man. Thanks. Let me begin by saying. That's this what is, we this like. is awesome for me because it's Long Island. I, I get to do this all over the world, but here. Well, you well, see, when I come home here, I just stay home, you see. Well, welcome back to a stage on Long Island. Let this me begin is, by saying. This is awesome. It's Thank great you. to have you in here, Richie. I've been looking to do this with you for a while. We've had some scheduling conflicts, and we finally made it happen thanks to this handsome gentleman right here, Mr. Jim Moran. We thank you so much for being able to be instrumental in helping us get this thing together. So it's great to have you in here, Rich. And thank you, and thank you, Jim. Good job. Let's talk about, I want to start with some history with you, if I can, Rich. Let's talk about when you began musically. I don't know if many people are aware that, yes, you play the entire saxophone family. Yes. You um, also play flute. Unfortunately. You play the keys. Yes. What did you start with? I started on piano. I was about uh, four years old. What was, the, in, what was the influence? Um, I, cartoons. I watched cartoons, and I didn't watch them. I listened to them, and I was figuring the music out in my head. So um, I had to uh, ask my parents for piano, and I got a piano, and I started figuring this stuff out on piano, with, which was the cartoons. At age four? Four. And then by six, I was probably actually better than a little piano teacher in our neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, by seven, I, I had uh, started clarinet, and by eight, this instrument right here, and never looked back. Never look back. Mm -hmm. Let's of, of course, um, you know, with, and then I added on the flute and soprano, tenor, baritone, and all that that goes with the doubles. Okay, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about junior high and high school days for you. What were you doing? Were you involved in school projects? Yeah, uh, I, it was kind of weird because I was torn between sports and music both because I was captain of the wrestling team, captain of the football team, played baseball, and was in the band and was in the jazz band and the orchestra and uh, the, uh, all the ensembles. So, so I, was, I was busy. So you got used to the, the crazy schedule at an early age. Yeah. Which you still have today, obviously. Yep. <laughs> uh, were you, I mean, so you're, take, you're doing sports, you're playing music. How did you juggle that at, a, at such a young age? You, you know, I just got up uh, real early in the morning. I'd go to school by, I know this sounds real nerdy, but I had talked the custodian to let me into school at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I went into the music closet that they had all the instruments in. No comment, Benny. <laughs> and um, I practiced from like <laughs> 6.37 till 8 till when band started. And uh, I never came out of the closet, Benny, okay? Love you for that. Okay. Smoke was coming out of ears, his yeah. ears waiting for that. I know. So it just was, uh, 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 I just had a passion. I just loved music. I mean, I still do. I, like, and which brings us to why we're here tonight, because of my Monday Night Jam. I've been doing it for 21 years. It's a way that I give back. And I, I look for the pat on the back, but really, I would be lost without the Monday Night Jam. And we started it out at the China Club years ago, 21 years ago. And we've been from club to club and band to band. And now this is another configuration of the band. This band is, I could say, almost seven years, but it's not, because Kevin's new and Benny's kind of back in my th thing again. But um, we've been doing this configuration with Jim, myself, and Panos, and Chris Clark, who's not here, and Johnny O. That was about five years' worth of, uh, of making uh, jam music. Another, and it's another great keyboard player, that Chris Clark. Insane. He jams. He, he's a part of that jam as well. He is. the. Um, the uh, we stopped saying that Benny's subbing for him a year ago. <laughs> Chris, Chris, uh, Chris performs in every Broadway musical known to mankind, and he, he actually stars in them and learns all the music. So he's doing three right now. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. He's another tremendous talent here on Long Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we've had him in here a few times over the years, and just a phenomenal player, just, you know, par for the core, I guess you could say. He plays with me with Bernie Williams. I'm the musical director for Bernie Williams. And as well. He's, he's in that band as well as Aaron. You're going to meet Aaron tonight. Your my son. My son is a singer in that band as well. Another kick-ass performer. I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Rich, I said we get into another tune. We'll come back and pick up the uh, Richie Kanata journey. What are we doing next? We're going to bring up a very, very good friend of ours who's supported the jam for, ooh, probably a good 20 years too, right, Ed? This is Ed Terry, and we're going to do a Tower of Power kind of bluesy, funky, rocky little thing called What is Hip? Come on, boys. Long Island Blues Warehouse. Let's do it. <laughs>
Armando from Seacliff, Long Island, and you're listening to the Long Island Blues Warehouse. We were born to follow the wind. So younger than the sun, and earth the bunny but was one as we sail into the mystic. Hark now, hear the sailors cry, smell the sea, and 
touch the sky And baby you and I will fly As we sail into the mystery And when you hear that fog horn blow Oh yeah, 
Richie Canada and the Monday Night Jam Band featuring Aaron Canada, tremendous contributor to this project. Aaron, nicely done, my man. Thank you very much. Nicely done. Richie, first thing I got to say is you had this boy when you were about 14. And he got all his good looks and talent from me. As long as my wife is not going to see this show, I can say that. <laughs> and if she does see it? It's all her. <laughs> well done, my man. The politically correct answer. Aaron, nicely done, my man. Nicely done. Let's talk about the history with you a little bit. Uh, growing up into a, such a strong music family. Well, first of all, let's talk about what kind of music was being played in the house when you were growing up. Do you remember what kind of music you were hearing well, in the house with, I mean, with mom I mean, and dad? The, the, the music in the house was the music that we wanted to make in the house. You know, we, I, when, I, when I was born, uh, they built, my mom and dad built a recording studio called Cove City Sound Studios in Glen Cove. Sure, here on sure, Island. sure. And uh, through osmosis, I learned a lot through music, being on the road, growing up on tour, and... Uh, it was about the music that you wanted to make, the music that you wanted to create, about being creative. And that uh, kind of put me in the right direction. So you were on the road at a young age. Yeah. I, I have very fond memories, uh, especially with uh, the Beach Boys. And uh, one of my main mentors, uh, Carl Wilson, who taught me a lot about singing and, and just being on the road with him. for Taught you, like, let's talk about talk how old you were when Carl Wilson uh, was teaching you. Probably about 7 to 13. 7 to 13. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah, it was, and I might add... That what an education. That when we were on the road, him and Carl really uh, uh, were good friends, and Carl really loved Aaron. And Carl invited Aaron to watch him warm up to tune up, to warm down, and to learn how to exercise his, uh, his uh, vocal technique, and it was a great experience. I stood back and said, there's Carl Wilson and my son. It was just awesome. You Carl, got, Carl Wilson. You got video? I just and said, you, Carl Wilson. You got video footage of that? No. no. Unbelievable. No. Why not? <laughs> it's all up here. All right. I good, all. good, Good memories, good stories to tell, <laughs> but man, what a great video that would have made. Unbelievable, yeah. my man. Unbelievable. So let's talk about junior high and high school days for you. I mean, you, you have your own project, obviously, today. Yeah, uh, I was, uh, I, I got a song placed on uh, Dawson's Creek when I was in high school. Dawson's Creek? Yeah, um, but the funny thing is I went to uh, Chaminade High School here on Long Island, which is an all-boys school, so nobody really cared. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Good story. Tell it again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it was, it, you know, it was, it was a good experience, toughened me up, and uh, got me into NYU, which was... Uh, uh, a, a great experience. I went to Clive Davis School of Recorded Music, so I got to hang out with Clive a little bit and learn from him and all of his professors at the, at the school, and and uh, taught me a lot. Taught me. A lot. Hey, if you had to pay some dues in the old bo in the old boys school to get you into that direction, man. Yeah. That worst things have certainly I happened, guess so. I guess, huh? Yeah. Unbelievable. Let's talk about the new CD you have. You have a, a, a CD called "Blame It on the City." I do. Uh, it's out on, in iTunes and stores everywhere. Uh, and uh, it's me. It's a, about a lot of songs, a lot of things that happened in my life. And uh, I'm writing a new album now, and stay tuned for that. So uh, a lot of good things coming up. The, 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 the charismatic and, and, and the stage presence that you command. I mean, you're very, very charismatic fella. Uh, I know there's a lot of girls right now checking this out. Maybe a couple guys, too. Who knows? <laughs> uh, that might uh, want to go online somewhere and follow you and see what you're doing. Where yeah. can they go online to, to see what you're all about? Well, uh, my name, AaronCanada.com, is my website. E-R-E-N-C-A-N-N-A-T-A. AaronCanada.com yeah. and, and you update it regularly with things you're doing Very, things. very regularly So uh, there's a lot of things I just played uh, guitar on a Demi Lovato record That just uh, got released Is so, that right? Yeah, so I'm just uh, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing music And enjoying playing with these guys What are some future things you're uh, looking to uh, That you might get into or you're looking to do? Anything in the immediate future you can talk about? Uh, I, I have some good things on the fire But uh, I'm 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 writing music and and uh, the the most I could say is stay tuned for something uh, something to hear very soon. AaronCanada.com for future info on things that you do. You're a tremendous contributor to music, my man, and and God Thank bless. You. Keep going strong. Thank you very much. I Appreciate look forward it. to seeing the Aaron Canada journey continue as you grow, my man. Cool. Thank well you. Well done. Well done, Richie. Great kid, man. Uh, um, may I add, he's getting married November fifteenth. I thought you were going to go there, but you didn't. So we're really excited about that, and we're going down to Mexico to do that in Cabo San Lucas, and we're going we're gonna to take over a club one night and play and celebrate his wedding. 
you just upset thousands of girls right now. I, I was a lie. I was just wanted to see the reaction, yeah. see if the phones light up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and the phones are lighting up heavy right about now. <laughs> the online phones. Great job, my man. Great, Great job. Appreciate it. Rich, let's keep the music happening. How about Lisa Miller? Lisa Miller, where are you? Come on up and let's do some, let's rock out and do something really good. What are we doing next? I'm going to do something by a group called Led Zeppelin. Anybody hear of them? I'm sorry, Led who? Yeah, it's a, a group way back in the day. And actually, Lisa was a member of uh, the band. Lisa no. Miller, lead vocals on this one? You got it. Here we go. Well, I look forward to hearing about your story with Paige a little bit later. Once again on the Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving with Richie Canada and the Monday Night Jam Band. <laughs> I'm gonna give you 
unbelievable kid. Lisa Miller, front vocals. Kick-ass job, kid. God bless. Thank you so much. Well done. Well done. Richie. Wasn't that awesome? You sure know how to pick them, my man. Huh? You sure know how to pick them. I wrote every one of these songs, too. I believe it. And all those Billy Joel songs? The way that was just me. sold, I would believe it. <laughs> I would certainly believe it. You sold me, my man. Awesome. Oh, it's what? a privilege to be here. I'm sorry for interrupting. It's just a privilege to be here with these guys, Richie. And you guys? Lisa Miller, let me tell you something. It's a privilege to have you on the stage, and we thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Very God bless. Very kick-ass. I really thank enjoyed you. that. Lisa has been contributing to the band for the last past uh, seven-plus years, of course, too, and for the jam band, and uh, I couldn't do it without her. She's been a, uh, a stronghold for us, and she's the, the band mom, so to speak. A tremendous, tremendous dynamic to this project, and, and well cool. done, kiddo. Thank you so we much. We appreciate it. God bless. Richie, let's continue the uh, Richie Kanata journey, if we can, for a moment. I want to jump into 1975. Mm -hmm. You became a member of Billy Joel's band. Yeah. How, how did that come about? I uh, actually was doing a jingle for Sesame Street, and uh, it was a song called The Meter, The Leader, and The Gram. And uh, I came in as an overdub at the uh, NYIT Studios. Okay. And uh, Liberty and Doug had just done the basic track, and Liberty, excuse me, and Doug's brother, Al Stegmeyer, was the engineer. I came in the next day to do my parts, and he said, um, my brother's just joined uh, this group, Billy Joel, this, this guy, and he's looking for a sax player that plays keyboards. And I said, well, I, I do. So they came, and uh, I, I got in touch with Doug. Doug called me. Then they all came to a club I was playing out on Route 110. And uh, um, what club? Do you remember the name? They they come and gone, so I know. Um, Montauk and 110. Oh, who? Montauk and 110. No, no. Um, 110 in in like uh, Huntington area. Up north. Oh uh, Jesus! The ST4 played there all the time. It might have been that. The Bijou. Might have been the Bijou. Yes. Is that right? It might have been there. I remember the club. Yeah. So I was playing, yeah, it was that, I think. And they, they all came in, they saw me play. And then Billy invited me to come to Ultra uh, Sonic Studios, which was in Hempstead, and they were doing the basic tracks. And I said, man, wh where do I fit in? I'm a saxophone player. He was, you know, his, his hit was Piano Man. Where do, I was studying John Coltrane and, and, and Charlie Parker and trying to be Michael Brecker. And, uh, you know, it was just, well, I, I don't know if I want to do this. So I went to the studio, and they were doing Angry Young Man, and I went, wow, this is not Piano Man. And then he said to me, uh, this is the song I want you really to play on, and he played me New York State of Mind. And that was the first one I played on, but I didn't play it there in Hempstead. We went out to Co Colorado, the Caribou Ranch, and Billy and I did our, uh, uh, he did all the singing, I did all the saxophone on a Turnstiles record. And that was the first song I played on, was uh, New York State of Mind. How many albums are you on today? A uh, hundred million records sold. That's pretty... That's, that's semi-impressive. That's, that's that's semi it is, especially because you're never going to ever buy a, a, a something again. <clears throat> That's all a download. Right. So Absolutely. there's a there's hundred million of those things out there, you know, either CDs, records, cassettes, or, or um, albums. And, uh, you know, it's been a very great run. We were, we were selling and making music when people were really listening and buying. No question, no question. And what a, what a massive contribution to music you are with so many projects over the years. You, you had a run with Billy for, what, about six years? Well, it's been a continuous in, in the run. Be, in the beginning. In the beginning, it was a <clears throat> about a six, seven-year run, and then I decided to kind of move on a little bit. I just didn't want to... I, I wanted to do other things. You know, I just uh, went out on the road with Def. I played with Elton. I did Elton's uh, tw a 21 and 33 record. Elton John we're talking about, of course. Yeah. Um, and uh, then I, I just moved on to... I wanted to do some country music and play with Charlie Daniels and Nicolette Larson and Roseanne Cash and Rodney Crowell. And, and uh, then I was with Vince Gill... I did that for a while. I played with Vince and Pure Prairie League. I wanted to move and just do other things. And, and then I opened up my studio in Glen Cove, and that was uh, something that was real important to me. When did that studio open up? 26 years ago. It's been 26 years for you already. Yeah. You have, and you have a tremendous list of clients you've Am built over the years. Amazing list. Amazing. We won, we, won, we won Oscars and Grammys, and for the first time in 26 years, I did my own record <laughs> this year. It took 26 years to do. You brought me a copy, I hope. Oh, yeah. Excellent. I look forward to giving that some airplay. Very yeah. cool. Well, on this show and the other one. So mm -hmm. I look forward to giving it a listen. Let's keep it moving. We still got some other things I want to discuss with you, but we want to keep the tunes happening because we got a lot to do still in a short period Which of time. Which is a perfect segue because at the studio, we're going to be recording this uh, next guy who's going to come up and sing with us. I think that's on the list, right? Uh, Jeff Regan, who is a great, great blues player who I kind of met through uh, the jam, the Monday Night Jam, and uh, we hooked up, and he comes on stage and plays, and we just play some great blues, and this is going to be a very legitimate blues 
record that we're going to do with Jeff at Cove City, and we're excited about it. Now, you all set up? You ready to go there? Yep. A very legitimate blues album. Well, in the sense that um, I hope there's no rehearsals, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, they just bring a bottle of Jack Daniels and they make a blues record, you know. I've had a lot of illegitimate players up here on the stage over the years, so yeah. I, I needed to ask. So... Uh, that's what I meant by, you know, I mean, less less thought out and more from the heart where blues really comes from, you know, I believe. in Raw emotion. Yeah. We like that. And this is what we're going to do tonight. He actually, we're going to just make this up as we go tonight. So, and this is... Uh, You're going to shoot from the hip on this one. This one. And this is something that you wrote and told us about, and we're just going to go ahead and do it. He worked, he, he worked on it mostly in the parking lot on the way here tonight, I understand? Uh, just, just over there. Very cool. <laughs> you good to go? Yep. Richie, you good to go? I am always good to go. Before you guys jump into it, I'm going to look in this direction and say this. Once again, on the Long Island Blues Warehouse, we're going to keep it moving with Richie Canada and the Monday Night Jam Band. Let's do it.
calls me Cause I'm riding in Yeah, I'm sliding real cool Very low Lord, I'm gonna take you to school You see There ain't no other way you'd realize baby. Oh, I see you in my eyes And I'm crying, baby Said I'm crying This week's featured artist, Richie Canada and the Monday Night Jam Band featuring Jeff Regan. Lead guitar and vocals on that one. Nicely done, Jeff. Thank you very much. Nicely Thank done, you. my man. So, Richie, help me here. Jeff just started showing up at some jams? That's kind of the story, isn't it? I, I saw him sitting in the audience. He just looked like a great blues musician type guy, and I pointed at him. I think that's kind of how it went by, and he got up on stage, and uh, 30 seconds later, we were playing the blues. <laughs> right? Yeah. And now you've come at least a half a dozen times. Yeah, not as much as I'd like to, but you know, every time I get a chance to come down, we go down. And uh, what I love the best about the, the jam is, you know, they call, you know, this person up, ba play bass, you play guitar, you play piano, and okay, what song are you gonna play? And uh, you know, usually I'm like, let's just make something up because I I like that a lot better. So that's that's pretty much where uh, you know this song came from and a whole bunch of other ones that we did together, which is great. Don't overthink it. Yeah, that's don't, right. Don't think it, just play it. Just play it, yeah. just just feel it and just feel the vibe off the others on the stage and just, just go from there. Absolutely, the music feeds the soul and uh, hopefully it'll feed the people that are watching. The power of live music, my man. I'm a big believer in it and what a tremendous contributor to it. Well done, my man, thank you. Thank you very much. Jeff Regan, we appreciate it. Look forward to bringing you back for a future show, man. You got it, looking so forward we'll, to we'll, it. We'll have to talk about that. You need that. a sax player? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need a sax player. I need I need a steady guy for this for this show. So I, I could be your guy. That's something else we'll have to talk with your schedule. When can we fit it in? <laughs> we'll make we'll make it work. Rich, there's uh you know the the highlights for you. We we need a whole second hour to, to cover it. I mean, Greg Allman, you worked with Bon Jovi. Uh, Charlie Daniels, as you mentioned, Booker T, Phoebe oh. Snow, Daryl Hall, Rita Coolidge, Noel Redding, Robbie Krieger, just to name a few. There's about 100 other names you've worked with, you've either performed, uh, performed or, or recorded with. I want to talk about Celine Dion, one of my favorite female vocalists on the planet. That's awesome that you said that. Which part? Uh, Celine Dion, that you like her. Because uh, I do too. And, and she, she had come... I played on one or two records of her, hers, and she came and she recorded a, a bunch at Cove City Sound Studios. And out of all the female artists that we've had there, she was the nicest. She was just really, really pleasant. She's a wonderful person. She included everybody. I remember we did a Christmas record there with her as well. Of I played on that record, which is uh, one of my greatest records that I've. I'm so proud of that record because it's uh, we <laughs> we take it out every year and put it on and play. And uh, I got to. Uh, um, be with her at the studio. She was awesome. She was really great. As she seems to be. And, and a great singer. She's really a great singer. Well, that kind of goes without saying. There's, there's really no question about that. But what is the song with Ancello, um, what's his name? Um, Andrew Bicelli. Andrew uh, Andreas Bicelli. Andreas. Aaron, where's Aaron? What's it called? The Prayer. The Prayer? The prayer? Yeah. <laughs> you want to see her sing, hear her sing. That's an Did awesome she do that in your studio? Um... No, because it was a duet, and I think they did that part out in L.A. Okay. Yeah. That was a David Foster production. Very nice. Do that one. She was a sweetheart to work with. <sighs> Unbelievable. Very cool, man. Very cool. Uh, you got some pictures of that, I hope. Yeah, we do. Um, let's talk about something I believe you still do currently, the Beach Boys. Oh, yeah. You still work with those boys? Still do. It's, it's just like working with Billy. I st you know, I still did uh, Billy's last big tour, the 12 Nights at Madison Square Garden run. I, I, and I joined the Beach Boys when, when it's, uh, it's the right combination of Beach Boys. And right now, Al Jardine has got all the Beach Boy band, and I play in that band, uh, which has Billy Henchy and Matt Jardine and Bobby Figueroa and uh, all these great uh, 
uh, players that are actually in the Beach Boy band. So and, uh, we just finished up a run in Las Vegas, and uh, I'm going to San Diego on Tuesday to play with them there. Very cool, my man. Very cool. There's just the, the Richie Kanata journey. There's just so much to, to discuss. Unfortunately, we're running a little tight on time. We got time for two more. For two more? I say we jump into another tune. Um, um, well, I want to push the, uh, the website for the studio, which I, uh, let's do it now real quick. CoveCitySoundStudios.com. CoveCitySoundStudios.com. Yeah. It, I mean, if you just navigate through the internet and look for me or Aaron, you'll, you'll find a studio, too. We're, we're very, very visible, and we update it uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, if you, like you we said. Had, we had uh, Dream Theater in this year, too. They, were, they booked the studio for five months, and we also just did J-Lo's record uh, on the floor there. Yeah, tremendous. So we've been we've been busy. Mark Anthony's been in the studio too. Mark hasn't Anthony he? was there too as well, and is about ready to come back. <clears throat> hoping he's going to be writing with Aaron and and um, Bernie Williams. We, we actually put that in motion this week. Did Mark Anthony have Ozzy Melendez on trombone with him? Ozzy is always there. Ozzy's Ozzy is another one who lives at my house. Uh, it's my, we've had him in here a few times. He's with, awesome with his Long Island project, the Funk Philharmonic, right? Which I'm sure you're familiar with. Ozzy wrote a song for me on my record too. Did he? Yeah, he's, uh, I'll give. I'll show you that a little bit later too. I'm looking forward to it. Let's jump into the uh, the next tune. We'll do our goodbyes, and then you boys will play us out. What are we gonna do next? Uh, let's Rich? let's bring Aaron back and do uh, Fly Like an Eagle. Want to do that? Oh, love it. Love let's it. do that. Here we go. Jim, Long Island Blues Warehouse. Let's do it. <laughs> Sing 
want to do something? Canada, Aaron Canada. Oh, by the way, Aaron Canada, AaronCanada.com. Good job, my man. Thank you, guys. Good job. Kick ass as always. We got to thank uh, a few of the vocalists that are not on the stage Mr. Ed Terry, Lisa Miller, Aaron Canada, who just walked off. We thank you so much. Over here on the, let's see, let's start with the keyboards over here and vocals, Benny Harrison. Thank you so much, Benny. You're very welcome. We got to thank Jim Moran on guitar. We got to thank on the drums, Mr. Kevin Brigandi, Jeff Regan, not on the stage. Jeff, thank you so much. Guitar and vocals, kick-ass blues piece earlier. On the bass, Mr. George Panos. On the trumpet, Mr. Frosty Lawson. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Richie Cannata, tenor sax tonight. Richie, thank you so much. Thank you. We had a blast in here with so you. So we. RichieCanada.com. Mm -hmm. The studio site, one more time, please. CoveCitySoundStudios.com. What's next for Richie Canada? What are you working on next in terms of uh, personal projects? Uh, personal projects, I go to Las Vegas on the weekend. I commute there, by the way. I play there every other Saturday and Sunday <laughs> at the Venetian Hotel. So I'm um, gearing up for that. And uh, then I come back, and then Tuesday I'm back at the San Diego to play with the Beach Boys. And um, then we go to Cabo to have a wedding. So it'll be six years from Sunday when I get you back on the stage with me on the Blues Warehouse. I, I had so much fun. Call me back sooner than that, and maybe we'll do it again soon. I'm going to call you next week, but you're going to okay. book me for six years from now with that schedule. I hope yeah. I'm wrong. That's Richie, great job, my man. Thank you so much. Thank you. A tremendous contributor to music on Long Island and all around the world. We thank you so much. Thank you're you. going to play us out. Before you do, Scott Romando, do you have anything to add? Please remember to check out... EKO Studios at ekaproductions.com, the official studio of the Long Island Blues Warehouse. Thank you, my man. Well done. One more time, please say goodbye to Richie Canada. Bye, y'all. Come on, Benny, sing it out. Oh,
Do you?